Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm looking at Last Federation, a fascinating hybrid of turn-based um, bullet hell shooter, space strategy, uh, diplomacy, and everything else. It is really a kind of interesting game that kind of defies explanation. You got to play it to really see what's going on here. Our Arkan Games, as you may know, also produced AI War, which is probably the most famous title. But uh, there are also developers of a bunch of other interesting games. So I'm just going to do a quick start here where I will be the Hydrals. Hail Hydrals! I'm the last of the murdered race of Hydrals. My countrymen were the dictators of the solar system, so we kinda had it coming. Yes, that is me above, and you are me. This is our story. I was a sole survivor thanks to a renegade mission I undertook betraying my race to bring spacefaring technology to our potential rivals. My ultimate goal? The creation of a peaceful, unified federation of planets. Only then can we be safe from the kind of atrocities my race committed, and the kinds that were committed against us. Naturally, upon my crash landing at this planet, I was placed in captivity. Having no concept of my strength, they did not realize that I was merely waiting. I waited for years. Stardate Proto 3000. My dream of a universal federation is as alive as ever, and now the Acutians have finally gotten themselves into orbit. After spending so much time with me as a peaceful captive, they were ill prepared for my escape. I have commandeered the first prototype executor, and now the Acutians are in hot pursuit. And they're the Acutians there. They're a race of capitalist robots. The Acutians are still in the process of ramping up their space industry. So that gives me a short window of opportunity. But soon their mechanical CEOs will be looking to make planetary acquisitions. These dangerous, amoral robots destroyed the last remnants of my race after the Evox almost wiped us out. Having them as, them as my enemy was a given, I think. Here they come. Out I outclass this force so severely it will be almost impossible to lose, so now is a good time to put my ship through its paces. But I still have to be careful. If they manage to take out my ship, I will be just as dead now as later. It's always you and your lonely flagship, whatever, plus whatever NPC ally. So this is a turn-based, uh, this is a turn-based bullet hell type shooter. You can kind of zoom out and zoom in. And these are the bad guys to kill. There's one here that's a, a bumblebee. And this is Model X. This one has shields and I need the energy blaster to attack it. So I'm gonna... I can set my motion with the controls this way. And that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna switch to use my uh, energy blaster since that's longest range and it actually says these are vulnerable to energy blasters. So that's a good way to start. So there go the bullets. You can see the the weapons already coming out so I'm just gonna keep moving this way and I guess I'm just gonna try cutting around the inside here yeah look at that <laughs> dodging all his bullets now his shields are down so what I'm gonna do if you mouse over it, it says oh it says he's still vulnerable to energy blaster I thought he would be totally vulnerable to the gravity thing but apparently not now, Energy Blaster kills this thing. Energy Blaster, oh well, so much for that. I was just gonna try and show that thing. Oh look, check out the top of the screen, objectives. It does tell us during this first battle that we can um, optionally dock with the platform and instead you'll give them science. May not be the best option. So okay, now it says, now the shields are down. Okay, so let's turn around. Oh, fly through the middle here. I'm gonna go this way, and now I use my gravity lance. That's the time to use it. Aha! You see, doing serious damage to these guys. Flank speed, gentlemen! Okay, so now there's a lot of other ships flying around. So I gotta find the target. Where's, where's the one I'm supposed to kill? He is... Have I killed one of them? I don't know where the other flagship is. I'm going to turn this way and I'm going to switch to miniguns because those are pretty good at mopping up these little guys that are zipping around. But I'm looking... Is that the one I'm after? That's the bumblebee there. Yeah, there we go. So now I'm leaving all these fighters behind and... Oh! 
Oh, flagship power management unlocked. I swear this is the last time. Hurry up, etc, etc. So basically, as you're playing through a number of turns, it'll uh, get you the ability to unlock. It'll, it'll start teaching you more about the game. So what, it's, what I've unlocked now is the ability to adjust my power. So I can put more power into my, my engine so I can travel a little faster, since I do need to kind of get over to this guy who's running away. And look at this, I can do click like that. Yeah, so I can turn around like that. There we go. Look at it's almost full power to the engines. And the minigun is not doing nearly as much damage. But now I'm totally in range. These guys are vulnerable to the gravity lance, so I'm just gonna cut all the power to my engines, all power to the shield uh, and all power to the weapons. And I guess I'll just turn this way and gravity lance them to death. Yes! And so I warp out. Escaping from my captors finally, and now I am ready to bring peace to the solar system and unite them as the Federation, the last Federation. So you get a little after action report telling me that I gained some credits, which is basically space money. It's kind of more abstract than that, but it's easy to sell it in that way. I rescued some Akutian pilots, I'll maybe be able to return them uh, at some point, or uh, perhaps sell them as slaves, depending upon who approves of such things. I took a bunch of shield damage, hull damage, okay. But uh, that's all repaired afterwards. So my influence with the Akutians went down. So now this is the, this tells you about the solar system map, and what they suggest early on is you need to go get some credit to spend. And one good suggestion early on is to deliver spacefaring technology to a few of the races, and they suggest the Skylaxians, Andors, and or the Peltians, right? And then some dispatch missions for them to gain more credit, okay? So here we go, it says specimen want terraforming specs. This is Chief Spe uh, Oh, we're, we're there with the Borines, right? The Borines are kind of space pigs. The Thoraxians are space bugs. What else have we got? These are the Evox. These are the Borines. This is where I am. These are the Acutians. Feeling friendly? That's a spirit. You're going to have to make some friends, etc. This tells you... I can assist them with Armada construction, but I'm not going to do that. You can also uh, talk to the CEOs. It was the Acutians who delivered the final blow to your race, and that ruthlessness carries over into how they handle politics, which to them is really just another layer of their capitalistic businesses. Acutian CEOs are extremely well guarded and cannot be assassinated, but you can make them fall from power by sabotaging their industry. So yeah, you can actually... Each of the races has a specific government time, a type, and uh, right now the you know, the, who is it? The mining, the scientific and the financing groups are the most powerful local industries. So uh, those are the most influential CEOs. It changes over time as well. You can also see they have various standings towards other races. Now, if I go over to the Skylaxians, remember those were the ones that were suggested that perhaps I might want to talk with these guys. Um... I can actually deliver them space wing tape, but you know what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to I'm going to talk with the Borines because that's a good way to start. I will get a lot of influence of the Borines. Let's actually do this first. Chief Terraformer Specimen 3003. I'm just going to. These are light, limited time missions. You want to make sure you accept them before they expire. If I ignore them, then the Borines won't like me as much. The Thoraxians can be very dangerous later on in the game. So the computer helps us from time to time. It says this race is least su suited to their planet out of the remaining races that are not yet spacefaring. That's why they want the terraforming technology. So let's go okay. Oi! Okay, so stuff got real. Maybe. This is either going to be incredibly easy or impossibly hard depending upon how many races are already spacefaring. Just be careful of alerting those spy probes and make your way to the drop zone. That's it. Okay, so... This is where we're going. What have we got? We've got missile shields. The Acutians are just really not happy with these things. There's turrets everywhere. Gravity lance turrets. That's a scatter shot. You know what? I'm just gonna. What I'm gonna try and do 
is full speed ahead, because that's really the, what's going to work, right? So I can kind of... What is this? Is it, this is... It doesn't tell me... Oh, this is a spy probe. I'm going to fly around the spy probes. Not that there's much I can do here. I'm still going to have to fight these guys. And I'm going to switch to... Switch to the minigun. Because that'll shoot these little things really quickly. And you know what? Less power to the shields, more power to my weapons. Because, you know, maybe I'll kill something. Whoa! Look at all those bullets. This is my shields here in blue, incidentally. But I get here, I ditch the documents, and now the Borines have the, the technology behind terraforming, so they can perhaps make their environment a little more stable. Took five turns, I took a bunch of damage, a total of 40 hostile ships, and I destroyed none of them. I lost influence with the Thoraxians because they wanted spacefaring tech and I was like, you are scary bug monsters, I don't want to give you that. The Borines are uh, now happy with me and I didn't have to give them spacefaring technology yet. And I got a lot of influence with the space pigs. Okay, so let's go back and I was going to talk to... Yeah, these are actually... Can we do friendly acts? Deve develop spacefaring tech? No, I don't want to do that. Let's go to the... Let's go to the Skylaxians. So, the friendly act I was about to do was deliver spacefaring tech. And I will get 5,000 credits from it. Unfortunately, if I do that, the Acutians will not be happy. Right? So, uh, I have to try and not get caught while doing this. I'm going to take action. So, see all the spy probes everywhere? Okay. So let's go this way. Is that that's the thing? So I'm just gonna go this way. Make sure I don't fly into the actual spy probes so that they don't catch me. And go straight to the drop zone. Nice and easy. And nobody catches me. Pod successfully jettisoned with technical the documents. Are now space -bearing. They are an advanced species and disapprove of your race's past actions. However, they may just be the key to forming a federation, as their powers of persuasion over the other races are non-trivial. So yeah, the Skylaxians are like super tech guys. So this tells you about the technology tree being unlocked. It's a standard, you know, tech tree. Not every race can learn every technology. Um, sometimes you have to get technologies from other races, but um, you can see there are different races at the top here, right? So there's stuff that helps you get more awesome, some benefit you, some benefit the races, but uh, you know, the allies want them. For example, terraforming doesn't really help me, but, it, but it's something I can use as a bargaining chip. Don't underestimate the power of science. If a race gets far ahead of the number of techs they have learned, they can absolutely dominate their races. And how do I fit in? Well, so I can also research technology. Basically, I can help research the technology, or I can uh, research it with the races that already know what they're doing. And also you can uh, raid, you can recruit informants and uh, raid them for technology, but it's not necessarily the best way to do it. So anyway, after action report, we gained credits, we gained influence with the Skylaxians, and we didn't manage to annoy the, the, the what do you call it? Not the Autons, the, <laughs> those other guys. <laughs> The Ataxian, whatever the Acutians, yes. Okay, so who, who else? Those are those are one guy, and I also want to, yeah, the Peltians. I want to help those guys. So they're like space Ewoks. So having the races um, both have spacefaring technology will help them because then they'll be able to trade. So I'm going to deliver spacefaring tech to these guys. So I'm hoping not to get caught again. Also. I will gain voting proxies here. I should actually show you the, um, I should show you the, what not the science thing. Okay, where am I going here? I guess I'm gonna navigate ever so carefully through here. Staying out of the way of these spy probes. Ah, there we go, so I gotta head down the middle there. Don't shoot anything. That might alert their spy probes. Once again, total, you know, 
turn-based movement and everything. I guess some of them are a little more crazy. This is this seems a lot easier than it used to be. The Peltians are now spacefaring. They are soft and weak. However, they have a penchant for blowing things up from orbit. They may be easy allies to win over. They may be easy allies to win over. I took no shield damage. I total of host 12 host ships, etc. And I picked up Peltian voting proxies. So yeah, I can actually go to the Peltian Collective. So there they are. They kind of look like space owls or something. With their innocent outlook and pleasant demeanour, these barn owl-like creatures are some of the easiest to get along with in the solar system. If they don't already have a grudge against you, that is. Getting them into the Federation early is one of the easiest ways to get the Federation started, but it can make the more warlike races scorn the Federation's weakness. So I have uh, voting proxies and I can spend these, it, it kind of, I, I guess it works differently here. The planetary spokes Peltian is named He. <laughs> Your proxies are no good on any other Peltian worlds that exist. Okay, so the Peltian voting proxies are only local to each planet. Okay, I'm not going to deal with that just yet, but that just shows you the the notions of uh, the notions of their their politics. The Skylaxian Senate, incidentally, these are like the Greys. From uh, you know the X Files, the Skylaxian Senate is an interplanetary body that makes all decisions for their race. The Skylaxians are seen as fair brokers by all the other races, and thus good relationship with them can help you backdoor other races into the Federation, even if the other races hate you. Trouble is, the Skylaxians are likely to take issue with many of your activities, so they they get mad at you for all sorts of things. But actually, their senatorial stance is extremely pro-war and pro-trade. So uh, yeah, they have a, like a senate which periodically changes to see that the, 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 there's periodic elections. And so there are specific actions you can take to influence these elections. So the last race I'm going to uplift are the Andor. And again, same deal as before, deliver the spacefaring tech. I want to try and avoid upsetting these guys. So there's a lot more to see here. And I'm not sure where... Uh, I guess it might just be off the bottom here. So I'm going to go over this way for now. I'm going to try and find out what... Uh-oh! Have they seen me? Oh wow, I, I hope that wasn't a sign that they saw me, because I'd really prefer not to annoy my new friends. Ah, there we go. If only I could roll just a little further off the bottom of the screen. There we go. Oh! He's seen me as well. Oh, either that or those are spy probe things. Well, who knows? Let's find out. The Andors are now spacefaring. Their benevolent nature may make them a source of help. Okay, and it's also giving me some education on special abilities. Uh, special abilities are things that when you use them, they make your ship do special things. And they uh, also wipe out all bullets and stuff near you, which is kind of neat, but they make you stop. Uh, so you can unlo you can customize your flagship to do all these things. So let's just skip through this. Ammunition and recharge time, don't worry. And we have a black market. The black market is useful because you can spend it to buy things and sell things and whatever. Okay, so I, su oh, I guess those things shooting at me didn't actually count, they were just shooting randomly, they didn't notice that I delivered technology to the Andors. So okay, so we've got three races uplifted, there's now some pirates floating around, I wonder if I can help destroy pirate bases, eh? So this will get me, okay, oh everybody likes it when uh, I, I destroy pirate bases, excellent, let's do that. Hey, you have some allies! Woo! Okay. I've, I should have probably looked at what my uh, technologies, my abilities are. Okay, so these are spaceship launching, cloaking device, transfer power to my shields. Okay. Causing my shields to be recharged, and these are signal jammers and stuff. Okay, so where's the pirate bases? That's them out this way. Well, let's head over this way as quickly as I like, because it would be a shame if my friends were to be damaged. And I'm going to back off this a little. And I'm going to switch to... You know, I'm going to keep that 
Uh, I'm gonna keep that for now. There's my my guns. Okay, so now cut back the power. More power to weapons, actually. I'm gonna slow down. And this thing is vulnerable to the energy blaster, but you know, so I'm just gonna more or less stop here, switch to energy blaster. Oh, I should probably actually set the thing to this. You know what, I'm also going to launch some friends. See, these guys will help me out here. Come on, shoot that pirate base. I should really, maybe I can tell it. So, I guess my thing isn't targeting it, so I need to... There. Target this selected ship. There, now we're taking out that pirate base again. See that? So your different ship styles obviously will have different firing arcs and things like that. So I'm just zipping around the outside killing this pirate base, which is part of the deal. And by doing so I will gain all important influence with the... I don't know, with the, the various races. Okay, so this is the next one to go after. Oh yeah, and I should probably switch back to fire at will, Commander. Maybe I'll launch my, my kamikaze fighters to fly along with me as well. There we go. My shields are doing just fine. And... okay. There we did! We destroyed the pirate base. Took 20 turns. And of course, in those 20 turns, some of the races got more technology. Victory! So I well, won a bunch of influence with the Acutians, helping us clean up pirate scum. The Acutian base was destroyed. Oh yeah, of course, they are not so happy because I destroyed their things. I used a bunch of special abilities, destroyed things, I made some credits. And uh, that's okay, that's cool. So now I've got some credits, what else can I do? I can go to the black market. I could sell the prisoners as slaves, but that will uh, damage my influence with some of these. The Peltians, um, the, this will actually improve my, um, it'll improve my standing with the Peltians because they are afraid of slave traders, whereas the Andors and the Skylaxians simply disapprove, you know, hellaciously. Okay, by this point, I think you get where this is going. The game is hugely complicated. There are so many strategies, and I haven't even unlocked half of them, right? The tutorial system is giving me new abilities as time goes on. You uh, get graphs of details, of numbers, and text everywhere. You can trade technology, you can bomb your opponents into the Stone Age, you can pollute their worlds, and you can sabotage them from the inside. There are insectoid races where they, you know, it's all about whether the queen's mood swings are right. There are warrior races who you have to challenge in personal combat and somehow you have to get everyone to come together and join your federation or be destroyed by it. That's the other way is to wipe out everyone that doesn't join your federation. So yeah, the game is The Last Federation. I hope you're interested in this. I think it's it's a great thing. I waste so much time on this so far. If you are at all into strategy games or space strategy games, then this is really worth a look. Uh, even though the combat is kind of interesting and different, it's kind of like two games that have been bolted together. I think it's great. It covers so much, so many sci-fi tropes. It is rich in the ways that it has harvested its backgrounds. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.